What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Exotic Astrology again, and beautiful day it is here. <laughs> the other day, somebody was asking me a question. When I saw the question, I was taken aback. Wow, what a question it was! How to be a yogi, or how to be like a yogi, or how to act, stay, and behave like a yogi when we are staying in a city. Yes, because there are no forests. <laughs> so then what to do? We are stuck in metros or somewhere in towns or in villages, but there are no forests. So how to behave like a yogi? How to stay? How to be in that consciousness of a yogi? Yes. So that's the topic of the video of today. How to be a yogi in a city. All right. So if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed, then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website and if you like this video which i am very sure you will like it then click the thumbs up at the end and if somebody is interested to know how to be a yogi some of your friend <laughs> then please direct this video to him or her okay there you go before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you become like a yogi. <laughs> Even if you're staying in a city like Paris or Bombay. Oh my God, it's Mumbai. <laughs> All right. So basically, who is a yogi? There are many definitions of uh, the word yogi. And Arjuna also asks Lord Krishna in the Gita. Oh, please tell me about the self-realized soul. How does he walk? How does he talk? <laughs> yes. So Lord Krishna gives lots of answers. We will uh, see uh, those answers when we discuss the Bhagavad Gita videos later. But what I am going to say here is that earlier days, yogis would uh, go and stay in the forests. Yes, not all of them, but considerable amount of them. And who is a yogi basically? Yo yogi is one who is engrossed in yoga. Yes. Now what is yoga basically? It's actually yoga. It's not yoga. Yoga basically means to add something to your life. Yes. Now, when you say yoga, it actually means that you are adding God into your life. Yes. So that means a person who is wanting to go close to God, who is wanting to be close to God, that is the definition of a yogi. Yes. So he or she can be anybody. They can be a renunciate, they can be a householder, a husband, a wife, anybody. But if that person is having uh, so much inquisitiveness about God, about spirituality, and that person is wanting to go close to God and reach God one day, hopefully, then that person is a yogi. So now the question is, earlier days, the yogis would go to the forests and they would peacefully meditate and do spiritual activities. But there are no forests now. <laughs> so what to do now? How to be like a yogi in a city? Yes. So that's the question. Well, we have to understand that spirituality is very, uh, is very much dependent on the externals. Which means that if you decide that you will be chanting a mantra, you will have some regularity, some some schedule in your life yes but then if the surroundings around you are not permitting oh yes and i forgot before i say uh, anything about this video or in this video that there will be some strong things which i will say in this video so if you only like to hear sweet things then please walk away from this video all right if you cannot handle some strong things which i say as some of you mail me oh that's too strong you shouldn't be like that. <laughs> Alright. So then uh, probably you will not like this video very much. But if you can take all the things which I have been throwing since the last one year. Then <laughs> stick to it till the end. Yeah. So uh, what I was saying is that. Yeah. So anybody who is wanting to go close to God. That person is basically yogi. Because he wants God in his or her life. He wants yoga. Addition. Yes. And there are many definitions. I will not go into the complexities. Yes. So the question is how to do it. So a yogi basically, 
he or she arranges all the situations all the priorities in his life around god he puts god in the center he or she <laughs> all the women yogis out there <laughs> they'll get angry if i say he so he or she <laughs> so the yogi will put god in the center which means he will arrange all his activities around his spiritual activities should i repeat all the other activities of his day will be centered around this for example this means that the most important and precious time of his day which is the morning time right because that's the time when we get up and we are at our fullest now somebody will write in the comments oh you are wrong it's the night for me it's not morning no i'm not talking of you or me or her or she i'm talking of the scriptures here because the brahma muhurta time which is one one and a half hours before sunrise that is considered to be the most powerful time that we have yes but for that we at least need to get up two hours before sunrise and be in the brahma muhurta yes after taking bath for half an hour maybe so that brahma muhurta time the yogi does not waste seeing the news <laughs> or watching game of thrones or by watching Uh, movies or by watching cricket by watching baseball by watching basketball or by watching rugby yes that time the yogi uses for meditation for reading the scriptures for worshiping god yes so that time he or she uses now you may not get that time but whatever time it is whichever time you consider most precious to be yes where you are at your most active state where you are at your fullest yes that's st- that that time where you are at your best actually that time the yogi will use to do spiritual activities yes and then other activities will be later which means spiritual life is his first priority he has many priorities but he has one special priority the topmost which is spirituality so he will arrange all the other activities without compromising that activity which means suppose you are a probable yogi <laughs> visualize yourself don't just sit and listen this video that's not the way how you become a yogi because spiritual life as i said it is dependent on externals but primarily it is a internal journey yes so then what happens <laughs> visualize yourself you are sitting and you are doing some meditation you are doing some mantra something you are doing and then suddenly <laughs> out of nowhere a phone call comes yes so what do you do do you attend that phone call or not oh my goodness is the phone call of my boss <laughs> but you know that your boss will not call yes so maybe it's somebody else's phone so you decide you want to pick up or not but what i'm saying is the yogi switches the phone off that is what i meant to say because he knows that this phone can give me disturbance during my chanting so i am not supposed to use this phone because then my eyes will go okay let's see who got married to whom right in facebook that's what is going on these days <laughs> all my friends in their late 20s and mid 20s getting married anyways so the yogi does not use the phone during these hours because he knows that that is a source of distraction yes then the yogi knows i have to get up at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock that means i have to sleep early right so that means i have to sleep by minimum 9:30 10 now somebody will write in the comments oh it's not necessary you can sleep at 12 and get up at 2 that's possible sir it's so possible <laughs> <laughs> but what i am saying is for the normal public you you may be a great soul but not everybody is like that right at least i am not like that so for people like me we need to sleep so now what's the time in germany it's 7:47 pm here yes so after making this video i will be in my bed sleeping <laughs> so that means the yogi understands that to do my spiritual life properly my activities in the morning i have to sleep properly on time yes so that means the yogi doesn't keep activities which will delay his sleep yes so for example i'm making this video now after 15 minutes i will switch off my wifi i will switch off my mobile everything is off everything is out all lights out because if i keep my wifi on then somebody may message me yes then they may say 
Oh, let's have a talk. Yes, then that's it. One hour is gone <laughs> because in the night you are in the leisure time or in the any time in the evening basically. So then what happens? You cannot sleep on time. Then it gets delayed. So the yogi understands that no, I can't do this now because if I do this, I will be late while sleeping, which is not conducive for my spiritual life. So the yogi he or she switches off the mobile. Yes, some time before uh, he wants to sleep because he knows that it can become late if I don't switch this off now. Yes, now that doesn't mean necessarily you also switch it off, but I hope you understood what I said. Yes, so he will arrange his night time activities in a way that helps him to get up early in the morning. Yes, so that he can uh, do his uh, meditation and reading of the scriptures properly in the morning. Then. For that, you also have to make sure you are home early. Yes, <laughs> if you are coming at home at twelve o'clock by watching movies, by doing this, by doing that, then how will you sleep at ten? Right, that's not possible. So, now of course, if your job is like that, that you come home at twelve o'clock, that's fine. But for general people, I am saying who reach home by seven, seven thirty, or eight o'clock, so they do not. Uh, if they are like yogis, then they do not entertain nighttime parties or night shifts or nighttime fun, pub life. Yes, it's dog life actually. <laughs> oh my God, strong words here. Dog life. Yes, that's total dog life. That's animal life. Going to the pub and drinking wine, alcohol, having that's animal life. As for the level of the scriptures, that is. At the level of animals, so the yogi understands that athato brahma jiggyasa. I have been given this uh, human body, not the body of the, the animals, like dogs having uh, sex with each other in the streets. Yes, so I have been bestowed with this human body. Yes, which is very rare. So I should not indulge like the animals. So I should come home early, not go to this dog business outside. Yes. And then destroy my sleep. So the yogi comes home early. Yes. And then the yogi eats something. The yogi doesn't eat much. The yogi wants to eat only that much which will give him sleep. Not that you are going to eat a buffet at night 10 o'clock. Yes. 100, 100 items buffet I have seen in 5 stars, 7 stars. 2000 rupees. <laughs> my God. How do they eat so much? <laughs> When I was in Chennai, there was this ITC Grand Chola. Those days, five years back, the buffet was 2000 or something like that. So I don't know now how much is it. Yes, so, so there are some two, three hundred items. The yogi understands if I eat unnecessarily in the night, then it is not very easy for me to get up in the morning. So the yogi eats in a limited manner in the night. Yes. So then the yogi can sleep peacefully. Yes. And morning he gets up. And he takes a bath and he starts his meditation, his prayers, etc. And then, what about the day? This is about the night and the morning. Yes. Oh, yeah. And before the night begins, the yogi reaches home and he does not indulge in things like gossiping who had an affair with whom or who is going to, uh, who got the promotion, how. Yes. The yogi switches all the nonsense gossip and the nonsense garbage of this world. He switches it off because he understands that if I keep talking of these nonsense things, then in the night I will be seeing these things in the dream. Yes. And then what happens in the morning? Those things will come when you are doing your mantras. That is why people say we cannot meditate because when we meditate, the mind is going crazy. Why? Because your day is crazy. Yes. So whatever is in the day those things will be there in the morning yes because those are the things that is going on in the night so the yogi does not uh, watch uh, things which will aggravate him sexually in the night because then in the dreams he may imagine that he's with some woman and he's enjoying <laughs> and then as soon as he gets up in the morning he may feel that oh now the woman is not there now only these mantras are there my god it's so terrible i want that woman <laughs> so the yogi may feel that it is not conducive for me to 
watch things in the night which will not give me a good time during the morning uh, prayers the next day morning yes so he regulates his eating he regulates his uh, eyes he doesn't watch things which are detrimental for his or her spiritual progress yes so that is about the night and the morning but what about the day the day is totally out right no what the yogi does in the day the yogi has shastra chakshu which means the yogi has the eye of the scriptures yes eye of the scriptures shastra is the scriptures chakshu refers to eyes so then what happens the yogi reads the verse from the scriptures in the morning yes lord krishna says in the gita dushpurena analena cha lust is like a fire it will demolish you completely yes so when the yogi goes out to work <laughs> he sees the body of a beautiful girl sitting in the company and other 10 men are flirting with her the yogi sees the yogi doesn't see the body of this girl the yogi sees through the eye of the scriptures and then he understands that this body of the opposite sex yes for male or for female who whichever gender you are the human body is what basically the human body looks very beautiful but if you if you are from the medical profession then you will understand the human body is nothing but more than a combination of stool bile mucus flesh urine all the dirty substances are there in this human body yes so when the yogi sees the body of the opposite sex yes then the yogi understands oh this is all illusory it is all looking beautiful because there's a lot of makeup outside yes yes same way if you are a girl and you are behaving or you are wanting to be like yogi and then there's a tall dark and handsome man who comes out so you understand that he is not that handsome as he looks <laughs> yes so the yogi doesn't see the opposite sex he or she will see through the eye of the scriptures so then he sees oh 10 other men are trying to flirt with that girl yes beautiful girls everywhere <laughs> then what happens the yogi also feels like going and enjoying with that girl yes talking basically but the yogi understands no well, you may talk casually there's no problem in talking but the yogi understands where to draw the line yes not to talk things that will instigate your animalistic instincts yes so the yogi is very cautious in dealing with the opposite sex that is a very important thing which the uh, yogi takes care of because the opposite sex has the power to bring you down yes because that is the materialistic energy lord krishna says in the gita that daivihesha gunamai mama maya duratya mame vamya parpadyante mayam etam talantite daivihesha gunamai mama maya duratya it means that daivihesha gunamai this material nature consisting of the three modes gunamai mama maya my it is my nature it is coming from me i mean i have created this mama maya duratya it is very difficult to overcome so the yogi knows that once i become attached to the body of the opposite sex i am finished yes because lust is like a fire the more you indulge the more you want to indulge that's what people tell me we used to watch pornography once in a day now we watch it two times now three times now four times now whole day we are watching porn yes <laughs> so the yogi understands to the verse of the scriptures that it's very dangerous yes so the yogi draws the line he doesn't cross it he may talk casually with the opposite sex but he is very careful not to cross the line i hope you understand what i mean yes and then the yogi will go and see that there are people who are gossiping yes in the company they are talking to each other they are uh, behaving in ways which make them feel that they are very cool outside yes so then what happens the yogi sees these people oh they are talking 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 but the yogi doesn't indulge in that the yogi goes and sits he listens <laughs> but then he understands this is all lies which they, they are talking none of them is true yes 
people boasting about how great their life is the yogi understands oh it's all in facebook and instagram it's not reality yes so suppose the yogi gets a promotion one day yes yogi in a corporate scenario <laughs> yogi got promotion <laughs> then what happens the yogi doesn't become obsessed with it because he knows lord krishna says in the gita that suridam sarva bhutanam gyatva mam chantim ruchati one who understands that i am the proprietor enjoyer and controller yes obtains peace that's the peace formula so the yogi understands that only because god is blessing me that is why i am able to get this achievement so the yogi doesn't become self obsessed because one of the traits of a materialistic person is he or she is totally self obsessed and self absorbed so the yogi is not self obsessed the yogi is not self absorbed the yogi is absorbed on god yes so when the yogi goes outside he sees the dark clouds yes then he remembers the uh, verses from uh, vishnu sastanam yes shuklam valadaram vishnum shashi varanam chatur bhujam prasanna varanam dhyayet sarva vighna pachantayet so he remembers that it is said shashi varnam chatur bhujam lord vishnu he looks like shashi shashi is the moon yes because lord krishna also says in the gita nakshatra naam shashi among nakshatras i am the moon oh my god moon is not a nakshatra <laughs> moon is not a nakshatra but, but moon is the ruler of the nakshatras like yes he is the uh, ruler of the uh, nakshatras yes he nakshatras are the mansions the 27 wives of the moon so lord krishna says uh, among the nakshatras i am the moon that means i am the top i am the leader <laughs> so when yogi sees the cloud he remembers oh lord vishnu looks like that shrivatsam kam kostu bhod bhasitangam he is having the shrivatsa that three fold mark in his chest and he is having kostu mani yes bhasitangam that is that is increasing his beauty multifold times Yes my god he is looking so beautiful curly locks of hair he is having so when a yogi sees the dark clouds which are about to rain then he remembers the beautiful form of lord vishnu yes when a yogi sees the peacock flower, uh, feather suppose peacocks are not to be found in cities but suppose he sees it then he remembers the peacock feather which lord krishna has then he remembers lord krishna yes then what happens wherever whenever the yogi sees the sun and the moon he again remembers the vishnu sahasranam bhuh pado yasya nabhir virada nilas chandra suryo janetre karana vasha shirodyo mukham pidano yasya vaste yamagdhi antastham yasya vishvam surana rakhada gobhogi gandharva dete all right so when he sees the sun or the moon he understands भूह पादो यस्य नाभिर विरद नीलस चंद्र सूर्यो जनेत्रे विच मीन्स सूर्य एंड चंद्र आर लाइक योर आईज सो वेन द योग इज सीज द सन एंड मून ही डजन सी दम एज प्लैनेट ही डजन सी दम एज सम सोलर आइडेंटिटी सी सीज ओ दीज आर लाइक आईज ऑफ लॉर्ड विष्णु यस देन वॉट हैपन्स लॉर्ड कृष्ण ऑल्सो सेस ब्रह्म भूत प्रसन्न आत्मा न सो क्षति न कांक्षति समा सर्वेशु भूतेशु मदभक्तिम लभते प्राम व्हेन वंस माइंड इज कंट्रोल देन द पर्सन कैन ब्रह्म भूत प्रसन्न आत्मा इज प्रशांत इज पीसफुल देन यस सो द योगी अरेंजेस हिज लाइफ इन अ वे दैट ही डजंट कीप जंपिंग गॉगलिंग एंड बॉगलिंग यस ओ आई गॉट प्रमोशन ये ओ आई हैड अ ब्रेकअप <laughs> the yogi is like the ocean the yogi is calm the yogi doesn't see the yogi observes my god <laughs> yes so then uh, the yogi whatever happens in his life he tries to see it as an arrangement of god because in the scriptures in the shrimad bhagavatam which is the crest jewel of all the vedic literatures this famous 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 shloka is there where lord brahma the creator of this universe sings a prayer to lord vishnu which i have also put in the front page of my website because that is one of my favorite prayers so in that lord brahma says tate nu kampam susumikshamano bhunjan evatmakritam vipakam ridvagvapu bhir vidham namaste 
jive tayo mukti pade sadaya bhag he says whatever oh my dear lord when a person sees everything that happens to him as the results or reactions of his or her own karma of the past and accepts it with a smile and says thank you to you that person has the right to claim liberation my god such a strong words so the yogi understands suppose somebody comes and slaps the yogi the yogi understands oh <laughs> it is not he who has slapped me it is my own karma which has slapped me yes and the yogi understands that unless lord vishnu will sanction it it will not happen yes so the yogi understands that whatever is happening is happening by the divine arrangement the divine will of god yes so then the yogi doesn't get angry <laughs> the yogi is peaceful the yogi understands all right it's okay <laughs> bad things are okay good things are also okay so the yogi is peaceful inside prashanta yes that is the one of the most important traits of a yogi whenever he sees a man and a woman enjoying with each other kissing hugging embracing does it sound familiar <laughs> if the yogi is a new neophyte yes then the yogi may get envious he may see oh look that man is enjoying with that girl i wish i could also enjoy but when the yogi advances the yogi doesn't think like that the yogi when he sees a man and a woman enjoying he understands that very soon they are going to suffer because very soon they are going to separate oh my god but what if they are married no even if they are married one of them will perish one day right how long are you going to live in this world even if you are married either the husband or the wife will die one day so the yogi understands the yogi doesn't get obsessed with the things which is there now the yogi sees the future he sees 100 years and then he understands that this man and this woman who are enjoying laughing dancing jumping giggling laugh kissing each other embracing each other making vows to stay life long till eternity all those things will perish one day yes so the yogi doesn't get bewildered he doesn't feel that oh my god i don't have this girl in my life my life is a waste of time the yogi doesn't feel like that in fact the yogi becomes more happy when he sees them because he understands that i am not attached to anybody yes so then now i can do my spiritual activities properly and the yogi eats those foods which are in the mode of goodness which lord krishna says and then the yogi becomes very happy by that he prioritizes his spiritual practices in the most important hours of his day and then he is very cautious so whenever he hears something he will always try to connect it to the eye of this uh, through the scriptures whenever the yogi sees the oceans suppose you are in mumbai and you are traveling through that bandra valley ceiling then you see the beautiful sea yeah, ocean <laughs> then what do you think yes oh my god this material world is like an ocean and i am stuck here oh god please come and pick me up here <laughs> so whenever he sees the oceans he remembers the material world which is known as bhava sagar yes so that is it i can go on and on and on and on and on taking and giving practical examples of how to be a yogi in a city all right and when he is idle he is always with the earphone he is hearing the lectures of his gurus he is hearing kirtans he is hearing divine topics he is hearing things which will give him fulfillment rather than hearing useless gossip and garbage of this world cinema songs the same song they are singing it in different ways different tones and they are fooling you and you are getting fooled right so the yogi doesn't delight in those things so suppose the yogi gets married one day yes with a very beautiful girl so externally he is behaving as if he is very happy and he is happy also but internally he understands that one day this beautiful girl she will become old and she will not be the way she is looking now and he doesn't get frustrated because of that because he understands that is anyways going to happen either you want it or you don't yes so the yogi may be very Uh, jolly externally but internally he is very detached all right oh my god it's a long video <laughs> all right so that is it from my side i hope you like this video so many strong things here <laughs>
so if you want me to make more of such videos of for example how to be a yogi in a city then please let me know in the comments if you like this video and there are so many things we can do practically we can arrange and the most important thing the yogi does is he will associate with other yogis my 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 he will associate with other yogis he will associate with other people who are in line with what he's doing yes only then he will survive as a yogi or in the city otherwise somebody will seduce you and take you <laughs> all right so that is it from my side if you have any questions queries or comments then please let me know there below and if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it okay and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website and if you like this video click the thumbs up and if you want to tell somebody of how to become a yogi or how to stay like a yogi in the city then please share this video all right until next time wish you good luck bye bye